Hello, Brooke. Today, I want to ask you, what are some tools you can give us to get into that flow state, which we were discussing in our last episode? Yeah. So a couple of things I forgot to mention in the last episode was that people who are most in their flow state in their lives are the happiest people on earth. So that's why we are all trying to get into a state of flow. Um, it also cuts the path to mastery in half and accelerates performance up to 500%. So, um, and we talked about the neurochemicals uh, that are included in it and it's the most addictive neurochemicals in our body. So I just wanted to give you that information as well. Um, but Stephen Kotler, who I mentioned has a genome project and he created this project at flowgenomeproject.com where you can test what your flow state is or what your state is to get into the flow. Um, we all have different ways of getting there. So he talks about four different profiles that you can have to get into a flow state. One of them is hard charger. Another one is deep thinker. Another one is a flow goer. And the fourth one he calls a crowd pleaser. So his theory is that everyone has a primary way to get into a flow state and then a secondary way to get into a flow state. So if you take that test, you can see what your primary and your secondary flow state is, which is kind of cool. And then it gives you a whole profile unpacked piece. Um, additionally, so to go into it a little bit more, just to give you um, some information on what a hard charger is, it's exactly as it sounds. It's people who, um, are the focused go-getters who crave intensity in their personal and professional life. You know those types of people. You can get bored easily with run-of-the-mill and seek experiences that have high challenge and high impact. So you think of like adventure sports, non-traditional travel, like loose itineraries, unusual destinations, substance abuse. Sometimes people use uh, to get into those flow hacks when they're hard chargers. Mm -hmm. If you're a deep thinker, if you think about it, like literally the name again, um, you have that away room or the catchphrase, um, we wish you didn't ever say was not tonight. Um, so your flow dream date consists of you, yourself and you and uninterrupted time to do what you love. So um, you tend to see flow through creative, reflective, often soothingly repetitive work that lets you, your mind wander. So typical flow hacks for that is widely and um, easy categoriz categorization. So you engage in like classical arts, painting, pottery, music, coding, or making. Uh, so those are things of a deep thinker. The flow goer um, is usually as we talked about before, flow is flowy, but this flow goer is uh, you're the flowiest. So what he means by that is um, you don't actually have more flow than everyone else, but your life, your attitude, your activities, um, even your clothing all reinforce that others, that being in flow is a central part of who you are. So people who do yoga, um, meditation, uh, internal martial arts, personal growth retreats. Those are the people who are flow goers and can get into that flow state doing those things. Um, you're done from the soul searching. You're either taking the road less traveled from the get-go or burning out in the rat race. So the last one, the crowd pleaser is someone who um, think of someone with a camera, someone who loves going to um, festivals, conferences, social causes, nightlife, sports events, love social media, managing organizational teams. This is the crowd pleaser, the people who have FOMO if they are not surrounded by a lot of people. So if you go to um, big speaking events, like that's going to get you into that excited flow state for the crowd pleasers. So 
as I mentioned, Stephen Cutler talks about these four different profiles um, that can help you get into the flow state. You have your primary and then you have your secondary. I love those. I like the profiles. I feel like I have a little bit of uh, every single profile. Everything. And yeah. that's what he says. Everyone has a little bit of everything, but you have more of one mm -hmm. than others. For sure. For sure. I like those a lot. Um, and uh, it's it's interesting the, the set of conditions um, each profile has to, you know, kind of help you get into that flow state. Um, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about a sets of conditions of you know, what gets you into that flow state. And, we're not, and I want to bring up um, Dr. Shiksenmihai again that we brought up in our last episode. Um, he has three conditions, um, which he thinks have to be achieved to get into that flow state, have to be met to achieve the flow state. Um, and uh, I want to start off with um, having a clear set of goals, a clear vision, and a way to track the progress. Um, the task must um, have a direction and a structure. Um, staying organized, you know, knowing what you're supposed to do is so important, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about calendars and agendas and just kind of understanding, doing your research about what your goals are and what your tasks are, having that structure um, and how to do it and um, how well you're doing along the way. Um, I also want I also want to bring talk about the second condition where um, he says there needs to be an immediate and clear feedback. So along the way, you want feedback. You want to understand how you're doing allowing the person to um, deal with changing demands throughout the flow state and adjust the performance to maintain that flow state. So um, you wanna know how well you're doing throughout the way and um, know where to go and if navigation is required and where mm -hmm. navigation is, depending on whatever you're doing. So for example, I'm an EMT in the emergency room. Yeah. Say I go into a patient's room and I have to do, a, um, I have to do, I have to, you know, complete many orders. I have to do multiple medical interventions. I have to know where all my equipment and materials are. Where are, you know, my alcohol swabs? You know, where is um, multiple other equipments? Uh, I'll, I'll keep it nice, short and sweet. Alcohol swab is all we care about. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. Like when I play tennis, um, I, I know my performance as I'm going through the games, how yes. I'm playing, if, you know, what adjustments I need to make. I get that um, feel that like really amazing flow feeling when I'm doing really well. I'm in that flow state because I love it. I love the challenge of it when I'm playing against people who are my pace or better. Mm -hmm, exactly. It's and you can go to your coach and ask them, how am I doing? What should I improve on? Or you're a trainer, whoever you have on the sideline. Right. You right. can look at the scoreboard and understand what the point system looks like. So those little things are super important, whatever setting you're in for your flow state. And there must be a balance between how a person perceives the challenge and how he perceives his own capability and skill set to complete the task. We talked about it in the last episode, the skill and challenge, the flow model, the balance mm -hmm. between those two is super important. You want to understand what you're getting into. You don't want to fall into that anxiety state where the challenge is high and the skill set is low. Sometimes you have to, to learn and improve and get better. And sometimes you don't want to fall into that relax, relaxation state where you're so good at something, but the, because the challenge is low and the skill set is high. So understanding that balance is super important to get to that flow state, right? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, having, having that high perceived challenge and high perceived skill and freedom from distractions is super important too. I think it's always important to understand like, we can only take in so much information. We've talked about this so much. We can only take in so much information. For example, if you're talking to someone, having a conversation with them, that focus right there is like, I feel like half the capacity of how much we can take in at, the, at once. So distractions are key. You want to understand what your, your situation and what priorities, prioritizing, like, you know, what you want to focus on. Yeah. Um, seek challenges too. Seeking challenges, Brooke, I think is super important. Challenge yourself every day, even if it's the littlest thing, just try to mm -hmm. challenge yourself. Um, and like those stretch goals that I talk about with people, um, having a vision for your year that isn't easily attainable, but um, pushing yourself to get there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, just concentrate in the moment. Um, to be able to concentrate for a considerable time is essential to difficult achievement. Um, that was a quote from Bertrand Russell, which I think is really important. Nothing comes that easy. So just try to concentrate on it. 
Yeah, just a couple of quick books on flow if you are uh, very interested in this topic. The Rise of Superman by Stephen Kotler, who I keep mentioning. Um, the Evolving Self, which is by Mikai, um, I'm going to call him C. Focus, The Hidden Driver of Excellence by Daniel Goleman. Um, there's a few others, and we will put this in um, the YouTube chat, just so you can see all of the books uh, that we're mentioning. We'll link all the, um, in the description in the YouTube, we'll link all these below for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Brooke, for the books. Of course.